So my name is Kevin Murphy. I'm an in-house developer for Hancock Lumber in Casco, Maine. Um, I, uh, I'm not uh, FileMaker certified, uh, but last year when they stood up and uh, introduced us to the Problem Solver's Problem Solver, uh, it was all I could do to not stand up on my chair, my, on my chair and cheer because they finally figured me out. Um, they finally got what I do. Um, in a, as a, since we're running this ourselves and uh, we are the IT department, uh, we, we're quick to jump on new releases. Um, we've got about 100 databases across four servers. Um, what I'm about to show and what I do is certainly not perfect. Um, and uh, this isn't the only way to do it, but it's the right way for us, and it, it got the job done for me. I've had a history with FileMaker all the way back to version 2 when I used it as a back-end database for building websites. Um, moved away to a LAMP stack for a couple of years and then came back to FileMaker when, uh, when we acquired another company uh, in 2004. Uh, my colleague Mike Hall will be up next to talk about uh, some of what he, what he does with FileMaker. And uh, I was uh, working on uh, finding a BI tool that we could use uh, in the company for reporting. And Mike slid in and he said, check, check out FileMaker. And the CFO said, FileMaker is cheaper. And so they bought FileMaker instead of my BI tool. Um, good news is we never have looked back. Those three smiling faces up there, um, I promise he's smiling underneath that mask, um, are my teenage children. Um, they are the cause of every single gray hair on my head. Um, I'm a photographer. I have a degree in, uh, photo, in uh, photojournalism, visual communications from Ohio University. And I'm, <laughs> hey, there's another OU. Thank you. Um, and uh, I'm an acapella singer. So this is where we're headed. This is what we're going to talk about. I got one here too. Um, this is a demo unit. Um, that's an industrialized iPhone 8. Um, it's in an IP65 housing, which means it's waterproofed and you can d drop it in a mud puddle if you want to. Um, it's got an extended range imager on it and it's running FileMaker Go for data collection. We're going to talk a little bit about how we reached this solution and uh, some of the technical details about how we did it. Not a long piece of technical, but there's some. Um, if this isn't what you were expecting, there's a billion uh, different choices this hour, so I understand if, uh, if you want to go see something else. So Hancock Lumber has been in business since 1848. Uh, we've only got a few minutes here, so we're going we're gonna to try to cover 170 years in 60 seconds. Kevin Hancock, who's the CEO of our company, uh, puts it this way. Uh, he says, before the first cannonball was fired in the Civil War, we were making and selling lumber. Uh, we're using modern technology in a business that's really firmly rooted in tradition and history. Um, and we're lucky. The management at our company fully embraces technology and its role in our company's success. So we've got uh, sawmills and retail divisions. Our sawmills take round trees and they turn them into square boards. We've got three sawmills across the state of Maine. We're the largest producer of eastern white pine in the country. We ship 90 million board feet of lumber throughout the world every year. So eastern white pine is decorative trim, shiplap, um, wainscoting, things like that. Um, it's not a structural lumber. It's, it's, a, it's a, a presentation product. Our building materials division uh, is, sells uh, mat building materials to professional builders that they turn into homes and businesses. Um, we've got 16 locations throughout Maine and New Hampshire, and Mike is going to be up next to talk a little bit about how we use FileMaker in that business and how they're disrupting the lumber and building materials industry using FileMaker. We've got, uh, we're pretty well awarded. Um, for the last five years in a row, our employees have awarded us with the best places to work in Maine. Um, that's a, it's an employee survey, and the lion's share of our score is based on, those an on their answers. Um, the retail division was the dealer of the year in 2017, uh, competing against 5,000 other uh, companies uh, in, the L in the LBM industry, um, com countrywide. Um, and the sawmill division was the uh, main exporter of the year in 2011. Our sawmill division, all three of our sawmills are also SHARP certified, which is the highest level of safety certification that OSHA offers. Um, how did we get FileMaker in? I said a little bit about this a minute ago. We're only a small shop. We're five IT people. Um, Mike had a history, and I got overruled. 
But now, and now we've got users that come to us and they say, can you do that in FileMaker? And the answer is absolutely. Take a number and the line forms to the right, which is a really luxurious position to be in. So uh, the application, we, all we have to do, all that we need to do is collect a list of inventory. Every single one of those units on that pile has a number on a tag with a barcode. We just have to make a list of those tag numbers and send it to SQL. Every single one of you just built a FileMaker application in your head and said, wow, that's easy. And it is. <clears throat> Anytime the lumber changes location, we have to report it to the inventory application. Anytime we load a kiln to dry the wood, anytime we load a truck to move it to the customer, anytime we're counting the inventory, we're collecting, those, we're collecting a list of tags. Essentially, we wanted to recreate what the existing but very aging system did. The workflows and the target tables already existed in the virtual application, which, or in the vertical application, which is called Miltech. Um, and it's a SQL-based product. We just have to send our data in and match their format. The existing application was lacking in, in a lot of different ways, but chiefly it was, the, it was lacking user feedback. Um, so users would go out with the existing scanners and say, when are you going to fix this? When are you going to make this work better for me? So we, we, started, we had to go on a, a little journey because the biggest thing that we needed was an extended range scanner. Um, an extended range scanner can read a 100 mil barcode at 45 feet. The top of a stack can be up to 25 feet away when it's in a bay and, and, and uh, behind two layers. Um, the top of that stack that you're looking at there is at about 12 feet. Um, our barcodes are around 60, 60 mil and they're code 39. So the extended range scanner lets us cheat a little bit on the um, size of our barcodes and get more onto our, onto our tags. Why did we upgrade? Well, that LXE, that's an LXE MX7. We just needed new hardware. We bought those things new in 2007, and they were running Windows CE, which, is a, which really is a single-use device. Windows CE barely works to begin with, never mind trying to get email or apps onto it. It was SQL-based software even on the handheld, and it was developed by a third party for our vendor, and they were no longer supporting the software that we were running on it. So when we were faced with them dying and falling apart and stopping functioning, we sort of had to ask ourselves, why would we purchase more of these old inflexible tech pieces of technology that cost $3,500 a piece to run software we didn't like when we could hopefully use a, modern a more modern, more familiar technology that would hopefully cost less? The vendor wanted us to use a Windows tablet and the Windows tablet, uh, right out of the gate, has one big problem. You've got the tablet in one hand and the scanner in the other. <clears throat> Windows tablet's market is also a real moving target. We couldn't rely on buying the same Windows tablet year after year, so if one broke, we'd be able to replace, replace it with the same thing that we already owned. Um, iOS is just way more stable, and it's way more secure, and it's a lot more reliable. It's also better supported by third parties for cases and things like that. Um, at the time, there were, there were almost no rugged options in Windows Tablet. There are a few more now, but they're still hard to find. So the evolution. We didn't like any of the existing solutions, so we can do that in FileMaker, right? Nothing complex ever started out that way, so we started prototyping and doing proof of concept using FileMaker Go on existing iPhones. Everybody in the company had an iPhone, so we should just throw it on there. So we started out trying scanning using the iPhone camera. At the very least, that provided a proving ground for us. It told us how to build and deploy the app. Um, it gave us some ideas about how, how we wanted to sync to SQL. And, you know, the scanner on the back of an iPhone, we could scan up to about arm's length. It wasn't awful, um, but we couldn't go much higher than that. We were able to do a couple of inventories using that method and then email a, a list of tags into our uh, vertical using a, uh, an existing import path that they had for CSV using FileMaker Go. It wasn't bad, but it was slow. Um, we tried iPod Touches. The camera just wasn't as good. And uh, some users tried talking their tags into their iPhones. Uh, that was fun for a little while, but it didn't last very long. 
the iPhone with a scanner works pretty well. But again, you're back to that two-hand model, right? The iPhone in one hand, the scanner in the other. There is a market that exists out there for extend, extended range scanners um, that are Bluetooth connected to your phone. But Bluetooth itself, if you've ever tried to connect a Bluetooth device like a scanner to, to an iPhone or an iPad, it's just not reliable and it's wonky. It just doesn't work right. Um, and it's, so it seems like it's sort of an afterthought to the manufacturers to make Bluetooth work with iOS devices. The battery life on the phone was also a major issue. We could blow through a battery on a, on a reasonably good phone in less than an hour while scanning tags with an attached Bluetooth scanner. And the, we went looking in the marketplace to see if we could find uh, a rugged, uh, rugged battery pack, and we, we couldn't find anything. I'm sure there's some out there. Um, we did find one that OtterBox makes, and it's not bad, but it wasn't rugged enough. So we went looking to see if we could find our holy grail. Uh, spring of last year, I got offered to uh, go to the Modex conference in, uh, or the Modex show in Atlanta. Uh, Modex is, uh, is a trade show that's oriented around shipping and distribution. So think Amazon warehouses, product in, product out. They're moving boxes around. Um, all of the scanner, scanner manufacturers were ex expected to be there. So Honeywell was there, Zebra was there. And my mission was to go talk to all of them and find out what they had. Um, but most of those guys see the uh, iPhone as a, a, as a consumer only device. So that industry is shifting away from Windows CE, finally, um, which has actually been sunsetted, um, over to Android, which is not what we were looking for. Uh, Apple doesn't really play in the embedded licensing for iOS play, uh, marketplace, so they really don't have a lot of choice. Honeywell's got a short-range iPhone sled, but they don't have anything long-range and certainly nothing very rugged. Um, there were only two extended range scanners that I could find on that entire show floor, one from Honeywell, one from Zebra, Zebra and they were both um, connected via Bluetooth. I found this company, Cognex, almost by accident. Turns out we actually use quite a few of their sensors already in our sawmills, but we don't use any of their imagers. Um, the guy that I was with at the Modex show was uh, watching a robot load, uh, load boxes onto a, uh, onto a trailer, which was fascinating for about 10 seconds, and then it was just the same thing over and over. But when I looked to my right and I saw the Cognex guy playing with the scanner that looked like it had a phone inside of it, that was way more interesting to me. <laughs> Cognex, it, Cognex is really well known for their um, abilities, particularly at that show, to read barcodes on boxes going by on a conveyor. So they read things really, really quickly. Um, the, the concept of using an imager versus a scanner means that the, the imager um, doesn't have any moving parts. Um, it, allows the, it allows you to read more barcode types, 2D barcodes especially. Um, and there's no mirror moving the laser around. So that makes it, that makes it a lot more rugged. The scanner inside the unit is hardwired into the phone through the lightning port. So that eliminated the Bluetooth uh, problem right away. There's also extra batteries. There's a battery underneath the sled um, and there's a battery in the handle. So that adds 2200 milliamp hours of battery power that powers both the scanner and the phone. Um, and, it'll, it, and it'll accommodate any compute. So we put iPhone 8s in them. This one actually has an iPhone 6 in it, um, just as a test unit. But uh, it's entirely possible and likely that they'll come out with a version for iPhone 10 that we can just take the top off, put a new gasket in, put the iPhone 10 in, and we're, back to the, we're off to the races. Not only that, but if this falls in such a way that we break the screen, again, take the top off, um, replace the compute, put the top back on, maybe replace it if they poked a hole in it, and you're back in business. So you're not replacing a $4,500 unit every single time that something goes wrong. There we go. So let's take a quick, did that? Nope, sorry. So this is the app. Now that we had the hardware, we could really focus on the app interface. Number one, we wanted to make it way more visual for the users. We used different colors for different types of lists. 
We, send, they, we give them the opportunity to send all of the tag lists or just one. Um, and if the scanning doesn't work for some reason, we were able to build them a custom keyboard um, so that they could, they could put the, the numbers in for the tags a lot more quickly. It turned out that the regular keyboard was way too cumbersome for our tag format, which starts with a letter and, and then goes into numbers. We were also able to give them the interface that they always wanted, which was th that we would show them the last thing they scanned first. This was a huge deal for our users, but as you all know in FileMaker Go, it's three clicks and you're done. <clears throat> so it was a really easy way to have a really quick win. The syncing is far more efficient. We've got lots of, uh, and we, we have lots of options for output. The data is not stuck on the device anymore like it was on the CE handheld. And yeah, I've had to bail them out a couple of times when they've done something goofy. And yeah, that means I probably did something wrong in the app. But guess what? As an in-house developer, the perfect is the enemy of the good. I can put something in their hands and say, go use this, it will work. And when they goof it up, it's on me to fix it. And when they goof it up and I fix it, I can change the app and give them a new version. It's pretty cool. We give them a lot more feedback um, including beeps and buzzes and, and vibrations coming from both the sled and from the phone. We can, add a, we can also add features. We've uh, iterated the app several times, adding things like volume totaling, and like I said, we've overcome some user error-induced bugs. So we'll go under the hood really, really quickly. This is straight FileMaker Go. <clears throat> We're not using the SDK for now. The scanner installs as a keyboard in iOS, and, there's no, and we've found no need to integrate the scanner API into the Go app. We're doing two different sync operations. One will sync down to get the validation data from inventory and orders, and that's just a SQL view presented to, um, to the handheld via FileMaker server. We sync up to send the tags using, calculated and, using a calculated and delimited list. That's what you see on the screen. We do a lot of this for things like EDI and other, and other places where we have to exchange data. We'll send that to the FileMaker server, and then the handheld will make an immediate perform script on server call to unpack that and send it to SQL. What that does is it frees the handheld right away, and it gives us an administrative layer so we can see what's being sent through. Some of you may be wondering why that's not JSON. <clears throat> JSON is cool, but it was too new um, when we were starting to build this application, and there were other things that were way more important to us for this. We already had processes in place where we use pipe and, pipe and return delimited lists for data exchange, and so we went with what we already knew. But this week, I attended the FileMaker training for advanced developers by Bob Bowers of Saliant on training day, and I can absolutely see where JSON can be used here, and I'm really excited to go back and start trying that. But this works, which was the most important part. The syncing code that we're using is based on a product by Tim Dietrich called, um, called FM Easy Sync. He, he presented that in San Antonio a couple of years ago at, at DevCon, um, and it was open code, and he had just some really amazing features. I learned a lot from everything that he did. Um, in particular, I took from him the ability to ping the server to know that we were online. Um, how to deploy the app to the, to the, uh, to the scanners, um, and how to use PSOS to pull data off the scanner. Um, I contacted Tim before this conference to let him know that I was gonna, gonna be giving this talk, um, and he said that the, sof the software, FM Easy Sync, is no longer maintained, but it's still available on his website. So um, if you download the session materials, that, that link is available there, and you can go get that if you wanna play with it. Just don't expect that he's gonna answer any emails about it. So here it is, the final solution, right? It's an iPhone 8, extended range imager, 2200 milliamps of extra battery. We deployed these guys in January of this year and they worked awesome in, this, in the winter months. Um, and we've actually had a pretty good run over the summer too. I haven't heard of any issues. Um, the cost, unfortunately, because of the extended range, was about the same as those Windows CE handhelds we talked about before. But again, if they break, we can change that compute ourselves. We don't have to send the whole unit away to get it repaired. The imager is also firmware upgradable and Cognex has been 
amazing about supplying new firmware to cor correct bugs in this very new product for them. And the end result is our happy users. When we have control of the app, we can make the small changes that make big differences for those users. And we couldn't do that without FileMaker. The scanner feedback is exactly what they were asking for, and the scanners just work. That's probably because they're new, <laughs> I won't lie, but uh, the, the ability to, to be adding apps to their phones, uh, to, the, to the scanners, and to give them what they're asking for is huge. And there are endless possibilities. We've already had them come back and um, we give them a live inventory lookup. So if they're in wireless range, they can actually hit a button on the, on the screen and go straight to, the, straight to FileMaker Go that it looks, allows them to look up information in the SQL database right through FileMaker Server. Um, they've also come back to us and asked for other applications, of course. Um, they've asked for to be able to make a quick list so that they can go out, scan a bunch of tags, and then export that list so that they can do ad hoc analysis or somebody else can do it. Um, and then we're looking at doing things like scanning consumption, which means if we take a unit out of inventory and run it through a molder process or something else like that. Um, that would require changes by our vertical, but it's certainly something that is not out of reach given the fact that we own the software. So I wrote a blog post about this whole process. Um, you're welcome to attempt to scan the QR code. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, if it doesn't work for you from where you're sitting, obviously this is in the, um, this is in the session materials and, and you can get to that uh, by downloading the PDF. Everybody tried? <laughs> that wants to try? <laughs> hey, that's good, I like it. I, I, we had trouble when we were uh, testing it on Sunday. Um, I probably won't post any updates for this. And please remember to fill out your evaluations. I'd be happy to take questions if anybody has any. Go right ahead. So the, uh, the, the code that you showed for the under the hood, I'm just curious, are you sending that um, like intermittently? Is it, is it instantaneously or connected through the respondent to show to your server or do you like, do, are you punishing it? Right, so the question is about how we send the data up to the server. And the answer to that is that it's up to the user. Um, as much as I would like to make it instant, the, the fact of the matter is that we don't have Wi-Fi coverage everywhere in the yard. So if they're scanning off in a remote corner and they don't have coverage, I don't want to attempt to do that and then have the, have the um, phone have to figure out what to do. So we built this entirely as a syncing application. It's completely disconnected. They can do anything they want, anywhere they want. Um, the big thing that we did for them, though, was we set it up so that it downloads that validation information. So when they scan a tag, if that tag, if they're doing an inventory and that tag's not in inventory, they're sitting there staring at it. But by having the validation information before they leave the, the before they leave Wi-Fi coverage, we can say, hey, <laughs> that's not in inventory. Make sure you know. Make sure you make note of that and move on. Yeah, so the question is about uh, the iPhones that we purchased and, uh, and how we did that. We bought our iPhones directly from Apple and we set them up with no SIM card in them. So what that does is every once in a while it'll say, hey, I don't have a SIM card, and you say, yeah, I know, <laughs> move on. Um, but uh, you can also put a dummy SIM card in and that works really well as well. Um, you put the dummy SIM card in there and it's just not connected to any, any, uh, any cellular provider. Um, and we don't put a cellular signal on them at all. Right now, the dirty secret is we don't even put email on these because they're, they're used by different people, but the, the possibility certainly exists, so it's really nice to have a, a multi-use device available for them. Yeah, go ahead. So the question is about where the imaging is coming from. Um, no, it's not imaging through the phone. It is definitely using the hardware that's on top of the scanner. And that's where the extended range comes from. Um, Cognex is, as I said, an absolute specialist in um, scanning, scanning barcodes and scanning uh, very, very quickly. Um, they've got technology that actually allows them to, to take that picture with their imager um, of five or six barcodes on the side of a thing and, produ and produce output to you that you can then parse and figure out what's, what's where. So you can act, the, the imager actually takes the picture. So follow up on that. Yeah. 
that's all built. The, so the, 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 it's, <laughs> it's error check. The question is about error checking. The error checking is handled all by Cognex. Um, it's the, all of that logic is built into the sled. The iPhone is just, is just the compute. Go ahead. Yeah, so the question is about whether FileMaker Go has to be in the, in the field or the cursor has to be in the field, and the answer is yes. Um, the, way the, wedge, the way the keyboard wedge works, um, you have to pick the keyboard um, as the current input keyboard. But Cognex's software and iOS do a really, really great job of making sure that you stay on that keyboard. So the user, um, the user says start count and FileMaker Go just puts them right in the field. And as soon as they land on that screen for, um, for collecting, they, um, the, the keyboard is already selected. Cognex's keyboard software also automatically keeps itself minimized at the bottom of the screen. So there's like, you lose five pixels, we'll say, at the bottom of the screen, and that's it. Um, it's not bad. It's, um, I imagine if we went with the SDK and we built um, the API into, the, into a, a portable app, we wouldn't have that, but it is, it's, so, it's so not a problem for these guys. Uh, it's been remarkable. It's been great. All right, well, I think my time is up anyway. Thank you all. <laughs>